Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chi Liu. I'm from University of Nottingham. Today I'm going to talk about the underwater CO2, uh, especially in the natural analogs, uh, how we can detect and measure it. Uh, this work is mainly carried out by my colleague, Dr. Giorgio Caramana, who is the uh, diver in these pictures. And uh, he is in uh, the other business chip, so I'm presenting for him. I've divided my presentation into four parts. First, first is the parameter to be investigated uh, and the techniques we are using. Following is two case studies of the natural analogs <coughs> of CO2, finally is the conclusions. So what parameters we are investigating for the under, underwater CO2? We are firstly investigating the CO2 concentration as free or dissolved gas uh, by using free gas sampling a dissolved gas sensor and acoustic system. Then for the chemical impact, of we see pH variations, metal mobilizations in sediments due to the pH drops. And also there are some biological impacts on bacteria, sick grass and algae, and also fish behavior. <coughs> for gas sampling, as underwater gas leakage can generate stream of bubbles which can be sampled. And the sample can be analyzed by standard GC technique. In the shallow water, the scuba diver can perform the sampling, but in the deep water or high risk environment such as uh, blue water or very poor visible waters, uh, automatic system can be used. For us, for the Punctual sampling is used for deep for detail me measure, but is put available for survey for the large areas. Then the mechanical device can be used to measure the volume of the emitted gas. So this picture showing my colleagues doing the free gas sampling in the shallow water of the near the Panaria Island of Italy. I will explain you later in detail. Regarding the dissolved gas sensor, in the dissolved gas sensor, a gas permeable membrane allows gas to flow from dissolved phase to a gaseous phase. A gas, is, a gas analysis generally <coughs> is an IR field. It's placed after the membrane to measure the gas concentrations. And uh, as a, mem a member of such sensor available on market, it's mainly carbon dioxide and methane. And such sensor can be transported by the underwater vehicle of scuba divers, and also for the long-term management. So regarding the acoustic system, as the gas bubble are very strong as acoustic reflectors, so they can be easily detected by the sonars. Under <coughs> specific con conditions, the gas accumulated under the seabed can be detected by the sub-bottom portfolio. System calibration may allow the quantification of the flux, but the environment conditions, like presence of substance sediments, very soft flow or vegetations may affect the result, should be considered. And this figure shows, here it shows, uh, shows that uh, gas emission was identified by a sub bottom profile. And for chemical impact, we can conclude pH is the uh, main parameters which should be used to identify the presence of CO2 from the induced water gasification, acidification. The pH sensor available on market can be carried by submergible system as the dissolved gas sensor. For long-term deployment, the drift of, of sensor should be carefully addressed and <coughs> a pro-injection baseline is a key factor allowing the uh, correct estimation of any pH and <coughs> anomaly. Then the reduced pH may mobilize special, spe specific ions such as heavy metals eventually accumulate in the sediments. Uh, such anomalies could be used to identify the CO2 leakage. And the calibration of the scent should allow the pH of variation be used for quantify the emitted CO2. Uh, this picture shows the multi-probe sensor carried by the diver to measure the pH in the shallow water. 
Uh, regarding the biological impacts, the CO2, with the CO2 emission can affect the local biota, generating stress on the life form and uh, facilitate the development of, of the specific ones. The bacterial community can shift in response to the changed CO2 level and the pH value. Seagrass algae can grow fast due to the fertilizing effect of CO2, but it will be damaged above certain limits depending on the local condition and the species. A fish behavior like the feeding and the reproductives can be changed in percent high level of CO2 like the uh, hypocapnia. So, so next I will give you, give you two case studies. In these case studies, we use this area, those areas to as a field lab to validate the CO2 monitoring technique first one is in the Panaria Island, which is a shallow water naturalist CO2 that can be studied by the Sakuba diver. The other one is in Japan, uh, called Gagoshima Bay, which is a deep water re <coughs> natural release of CO2. It can be studied by the EUV and ROV. So, uh, this is uh, Panaria Island, north, uh, north of Sicily, south of Italy. <coughs> And uh, the submerged cadilla with emission of the gas mainly CO2 close to the island of the Panaria. In 2002, the area was affected by a gas booster with a strong increase in CO2 flow, likely arranged from the degassing mag magmatic bodies. The flux of the event the CO2 range from a few liters to more than 150 liters per minute and with the total flux is up to 70,000 tons per year. So therefore, due to the environmental conditions and the relatively, relatively low shallow water, it is possible to use this island as a field lab for, for development of the monitoring technique and to verify the impact of high level CO2 on the marine ecosystem at very low cost as compared to the deep sea research. And this map is the area we are studying. The rest, rest dark here is presents the vents, and you can see that the depth of the vents is uh, from 10 meters down to 25 meters. So we can use this area really to do a lot of uh, <coughs> experimental work. I have a short video to show what we did. This is from one of our last estimations. That is kind of the gas emissions, and this is 90% CO2. And this is my colleague, Giorgio Caramena. Uh, basically, we are testing the, this one inside the box, the instrument from the uh, Kyushu University of Japan. And uh, the idea is we are testing this instrument where they can record the pH. And uh, we are also using some color just to track the plume of the bubbles. So the important thing is that you can use this area to test whatever you want at a very, very small cost at this offshore open sea operation. So the Few of data. Uh, we can see the free gas is mainly composed of CO2, nearly 90 percentage, and it also contains a small amount of nitrogen, oxygen, and also some H2S. <coughs> in this case. And for pH variations, this is a map of the depth of 10, 10 meters. As we already know, those area, the area is the main gas emissions. So what we did, we did a series vertical log of pH from a boat in grid patterns over the, this degassing area. <coughs> so you can see a sharp decrease from, from 8.02 uh, down to 7.64 7 <coughs> over the emission. And 
the good part is that the pH can be used to identify the leakage. Uh, that is our goal. I mean, uh, what we want to know how to detect the presence of the CO2 in water. Even in this case, you can see the bubbles. Uh, next, I, I go for the other case study in Japan, the Kagoshima base. That is, over here is south of Japan. And this is the area we are studying, the nearby these volcanoes. It's quite similar as the uh, Panaria, just a deeper. So they call, they call it Ayla Kadala. So this Ayla Kadala and the post Kadala active volcano uh, called Sakula Jima are dominant features of Kagoshima Bay. The Kadala is proposed to more than 22,000 years old. The last e e eruptions of the volcano was in the 1914. Since 1955, there has been a continued ash emission from the Kadala. The max deep of the Kadala is 200 meters. And on the seafloor, some events emit, emit high temperature float uh, more than 200 degrees under degree, and similar as the Panarilla, the gas composed as CO, CO2, uh, H2S, methane, and the nitrogen. So, so we can't do the, the Cooper diver in this area. Uh, therefore, those events have been studied by means of manned submergible and unmanned vehicle, like the AUV and ROV. <coughs> so it's also a review for Kagoshima Bay here. You can see this ash is from the volcanoes. It, it was quite windy as we did this last two winter. And this is uh, EUV. So the our colleague from Kosh University are testing the EUV, sensor of the EUV, the white, the white one. And the, it, this EUV can be identified the percent of CO2 from the induced water classifications. Then uh, they used a uh, very small ROV. It's basically a little bit than a camera with engine, but it's quite useful because you can rent from very small boat. It can use to identify the bubbles. You can see the bubbles compared to the one you just saw from the Panaria. It's very small emissions, but the ROV still can be can detect this pitch uh, once again. So we can see, we can d identify the leakage from the pH variation. So what we have learned so far, we can see the detection and the monitoring technique we are using uh, working. And the CO2 is clearly identifiable as a gas from the pH decrease. Uh, geochemical techniques are available tools. Biological strength can be used to identify the presence of CO2 value about the baseline and uh, the presence of the gas rather than CO2 like H H2S should be addressed for the realistic interpretation of the result. And uh, those two Natural analog we started have very good potential to be used as a field lab to testing the facilities for innovative technique and the technique uh, detection instruments. So finally, it's a CO2 detection suite. So you can use you can use the Aquastim system to detect whether there is a leakage. When you find the leakage you can use uh, UV and UV with sensor to measure and quantify the leakage. But finally, you could use uh, mon monitoring station to do the longer term studies. Uh, 
Ablak Sanx University of Nottingham and Krishna University and other uh, partner institutions. And finally, thanks the uh, NPL for hosting this workshop. And for further information, you can contact my colleague, Georgia Karamena. Thank you.